anyone who loved The Last Airbender probably knows more about the culture and customs of the Water Tribe than any other group in the series. We even looked better at the history between the Northern and Southern Water Tribes in The Legend of Korra. We kind of get why the Water Tribe was able to survive the Hundred Year War. In this video, we'll talk about the best Water Tribe characters. First off, Avatar Kuruk. Kuruk came after Avatar Yang Chen and came before Avatar Kiyoshi's cycle. Kuruk was a strong waterbender who was born into the Northern Water Tribe. He wanted to bring people together and do what Avatar Yang Chen had done. Before that, he was an avatar who was very brave, but he died too young at 33. After fighting dark spirits for many years to keep others from getting the same deep spiritual corruptions he did, Kuruk also had to deal with the tragedy of losing his fiancée to Ko the Face Stealer. On top of these problems, he was an avatar who went through a lot, and we often feel sorry for him because of all his pain on top of being an avatar. The Last Airbender only shows flashbacks of Avatar Kuruk, but it's safe to say that, like most avatars, he was the strongest human at the time. If he had lived longer, who knows what he could have accomplished? Katara's waterbending wasn't even close to as good as his. This was shown in a flashback when he went into the Avatar state to make a huge wave that Katara could never learn to do. Up next, Aang and Katara's daughter, Kaya. In The Legend of Korra, Kaya is shown to be the only child of Aang and Katara, the sister of Tenzin and Bumi, and the only waterbender of the three. She spent her whole life traveling the world to become a skilled healer. After Aang died, she moved to the Southern Water Tribe with her mother. Throughout the story of The Legend of Korra, Kaya shows herself to be a competent person, both with her healing skills and with her skills as a waterbender in battle. She was a very sneaky and tough fighter, and since she was Katara's daughter, it was no surprise that she was a master of waterbending. Kaya was a strong, free-spirited, and loving character in Korra. This made her a fan-favorite side character, followed by Princess Yu. Yu was a minor character in The Last Airbender. She had a short but essential role in the story. Yu was introduced as the princess of the Northern Water Tribe. She was a kind, gentle character who always gave people hope and optimism. Yu chose to die because she knew that the dead moon spirit Tui had given her some of its life force when she was a baby to keep her alive, even though she wasn't born a waterbender. Zhao killed the original moon spirit and made her become it. After this, she wasn't a human anymore, but still part of the Water Tribe. This is because waterbenders learned how to control water from the moon. As the moon spirit, Princess Yu's the only one who can do waterbending. She shows her power when she helps Aang make a vast tidal wave after he almost drowns at sea in The Awakening. Moving on to Katara. Katara's an essential part of the story in the first series because she's the one who finds Avatar Aang. She treated her friends with care and kindness, almost like a mother, and was also brave and willing to stand up and fight for what she believed in. Her waterbending skills kept improving, and she soon became a master of waterbending. We were happy to see her grow and become one of the most influential female characters in the story by becoming a solid waterbender. She couldn't even control her waterbending at first, but by the end of the series, she knew how to make almost every waterbending move. She was an excellent healer, but she could also use her technique to hurt people. She could hit enemies with her water whip one minute and then throw ice spears at them the next. This showed that the Fire Nation was right to be afraid of the waterbenders of the Southern Water Tribe. Adding bloodbending to her skill set only made her as scary as the woman who taught her this dark bending style. Next, Paku. Paku was first shown to be the strongest waterbender in the North Pole. This was clear when he fought Katara and easily dodged all of her attacks and moved around the battlefield like it was nothing. He has quick reflexes, as shown by how he avoided the ice discs that Katara threw at him. During the Siege of the North, he fought on the front lines without getting hurt. With one move, he killed multiple Fire Nation soldiers, and his waterbending, which was made better by the moon, let him cut through metal tanks. During the mission to retake Ba Sing Se, he could stop the attacks of firebenders, whose powers had been boosted by Sosin's Comet. With Paku's technique as his base, it's not surprising that Aang's such a good waterbender. The young avatar had no choice but to be perfect. Not to mention Hama. At first glance, Hama looks like a weak old woman, but she turns out to be one of the most resourceful and intelligent Water Tribe members in the whole series. After being taken by the Fire Nation, she learned bloodbending to use her enemies' bodies as weapons. With this skill, she could not only escape being a slave, but also torment a Fire Nation village for many nights without being caught. Even though she was old, she was pretty quick on her feet. When she fought Katara, she could throw vast amounts of water around without breaking a hip. And when she used bloodbending on Aang, he couldn't stop it. She even figured out how to get water from plants and the air, which made her an influential person even when she was ancient. Let's learn more about Hugh. Even though the Foggy Swamp Tribe didn't have a natural leader, Hugh was the most robust and intelligent waterbender in this society. He liked to use the water in the vines of the swamp to fight, and whenever he was in a big fight, he'd lock himself in 
inside a monster made of these wet vines. With the extra strength this technique gave him, he could pick up and throw around whole tanks with a force that some earthbenders could not match. Even if he was directly hit by a firebender, the vines were so wet that they wouldn't burn, giving him an almost impossible shield to break through. Coming up, Sokka. Sokka was known for his silly humor and lighthearted sarcasm. We love his character. Even though Sokka couldn't bend, he never let that stop him from making a difference in helping the gang win and end the Hundred Year War. He was a great strategist and worked hard to get better at fighting and using weapons. Sokka trained with his trusty boomerang and with Master Piandao to learn the art of swordsmanship. He was a brilliant warrior from the Southern Water Tribe who was very loyal and devoted. He was also a caring friend with a great sense of humor. Sokka's abilities only got better as the show went on, and after he trained with Piandao, he became an excellent swordsman who could hold his own in a fight between two benders. Combustion Man might have beaten Team Avatar at the Western Air Temple if he had not been so good with the boomerang, and Ozai's airships wouldn't have been shot down in the final battle if he hadn't kept his cool in a crisis. It wouldn't be fair for Sokka to be born a waterbender, since his genius mind would help him make the most of his ability. Next, Korra. As the water avatar who comes after Avatar Aang, Korra's the main character of The Legend of Korra. She's a friend who's determined, stubborn, and loyal. She's also very protective of the people she cares about. Korra's one of the essential characters in the Water Tribe, and she's been in many of the most famous waterbending fight scenes. Her character is someone who goes on a journey that helps her grow as a person and improve her skills as the Avatar. She learns to control her spirit energy and use the four elements. This complete mastery is one of the essential parts of being an Avatar. The Avatar also used these skills to make peace between the living and spirit worlds, making her the first Avatar of the new cycle. Finally, Akoda. Even though he wasn't a bender, Akoda could lead strikes against Fire Nation troops all over the Earth Kingdom without causing many casualties. Even after the invasion of the Fire Nation failed and he was imprisoned, he could keep his spirit intact. Sokka got his intelligence and fierce warrior spirit from his father Hakoda. Because of these traits, he was the leader the Southern Water Tribe needed during and after the Hundred Year War. And on that note, that's a wrap for this video. Which of these characters is the strongest? Is there any character we missed out on? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.